Hi, man with E-Trailer, and today we're going to be talking about the Lear's tonneau cover with the ladder rack on the back for a 2022 Ram 1500. So this is going to be a great option for you if you want to do multiple things, like if you want to take this out for work and you need to put any ladders up here or lumber, and you also want to use the bottom of your vehicle for storage for any items like tools or cement. Now, if you want to use this for recreational uses, that's great too. If you want to put a rooftop tent on the, on the top and on the bottom underneath the tonneau cover, you want to put your supplies. So what really sets this tonneau cover apart from the competition is how it works with the ladder rack. It actually has T-channels built in on the side so you can put your ladder rack right on top of it. And you don't have to figure out a workaround to get them to work together. What I really like about this system today and how it fits on the Ram is how high our ladder rack sits. Is that you want to sit over our cab and a little bit over our antenna too. So you don't have to worry about it making contact with that cab. And having this tonneau cover that's really easy to use is definitely a plus with this. All you have to do is open up your tailgate and flip a lever at the bottom and then push this tonneau cover and it will close in on itself. And since this is a canister design, it's not gonna take, take up a lot of room and you don't have to fold up anything that's gonna block your back window. Now it is gonna take up some space. That measurement is gonna be just about 13 inches from the front of your bed to the back. Now, not all of that is gonna be taken up. We are gonna have some space underneath the canister itself. So going underneath it, that's gonna be a little bit under a foot so if you have anything that is smaller than that kind of like a tote it should fit right underneath there and if we take another measurement going from the top of our tonneau cover to the bottom of the rails or our crossbar that's going to be about two feet so this whole space right here is going to be open so you can use that back window now for the working room you're going to have from our bed to the bottom of our crossbars that's going to be 46 inches so that's going to give you an idea of how high you can stack things in the back now i wouldn't stack any smaller items on top of each other if you have one larger item i think that's going to be fine and you don't have to worry about any water building up or getting into those gutters because we're also going to have drain tubes built into it so it has a way to release that water now, when you are using this, you're probably going to be using it for recreational uses too. So if you want to put a kayak carrier or a ski carrier, there's going to be some pluses and some minuses. One of the pluses is we're going to have a decent amount of overhang. So it's going to be a lot easier to access that equipment. Now, it is pretty high though, so trying to reach up and grab anything from up here might be a little bit of a reach. Overall, this is going to be a solid option for you if you do plan on going camping, and you need to have any longer items like a kayak or ladders for when you're working. Now, if you don't need it to be that high, you don't really think you're gonna be hauling a lot of kayaks or longer ladders, I'd actually recommend the Lear's tonneau cover. And instead with this square bar version, I'd recommend the one with the overlanding bars of a 400 pound weight capacity. What's nice about that one is you're gonna have that higher weight capacity but it's gonna be a little bit lower and it's also gonna allow you to use T-Track uh, accessories too. So with it not being up so high, it's gonna be a lot easier to access those additional items. As for the installation, it is a little bit tedious and it does take some troubleshooting, but we were able to figure out how to get it to work right. But if you need a hand with it, just stay tuned and we'll help you through it. Let's start off the installation. We're just gonna lay everything out. So we're gonna have the rails for the driver's side and passenger side. Along with that, we're going to have our drain tubes and we're going to have our top cover foam and our clamp extensions along with the hardware for it too. You're going to have some recommended tools that it says in your instructions, a utility knife, some masking tape, needle nose pliers, a Allen key and Phillips screwdriver and a socket and wrench. Now we don't have the tonneau canister over here at this moment since it is pretty large but you'll see it in one of our next steps. Now we've got our tonneau cover out and you'll notice we have this plywood on either side and we're going to have to remove that. So you're going to take a socket wrench and that's going to be a 3 8 one 
and you're just gonna remove these bolts that are holding it in place. And you do the same thing for the other side. The next step is gonna be grabbing a friend and putting it in the bed of your truck. You can't do this by yourself, but it is gonna be more difficult. When we are pl placing in the bed, what's recommended is putting something inside so it has something to rest on. As you can see, we use some totes on either side to keep it elevated. Now we're gonna come over to the tailgate end of our bed and we're gonna grab one of our stake pockets. We're gonna remove this white plastic on the back of it. And then you're just gonna lay that over this hole. And with that covered, you just repeat that same process on the other side. Now we're gonna install the rails. And the way we wanna put this on, what I like to do is line it up with your own bed rails to make sure you got the right one. We wanna make sure that this rounded edge is facing the tailgate side, and then we're gonna have a flat side too. And we want this facing your cab side. You're gonna have a passenger and a driver side, so just make sure it fits around the contours of your bed rails. And once you have that done, we can start installing it onto the tonneau cover. What I like to do before I install this rail is you'll notice we have this tab at the very end of our tonneau cover. What you wanna do is push this in so it's out of the way because it's gonna catch on the rail if you try to install it. And then you're gonna grab this rail and if you notice we have this tab here, we wanna line that up with the gutters over here. We're gonna go in between the third and fourth one, so one, two, three, four, in between these two. Once it's lined up, I'm gonna push in and angle it until it catches. Once it's caught, we're gonna push. You might have to apply pressure from the backside. We wanna make sure this is flush and push against it. Sometimes you might have to come underneath, check if everything's fitting well. In my case, mine was a little bit off. Now that I've adjusted for that, I'm gonna push some more now. Now that I've pushed, I'm gonna tilt it. Once everything's looking flush and is caught on the edge of that rail, we're gonna push it down until it's flush and push against it until it makes it all the way across. You might have to push a little bit and it's gonna stick out a little bit past the back of it. What we wanna do is make sure that underneath it's lined up with this hole where a bolt's gonna go through. And now we're gonna grab this bolt and run it up through there. We're just gonna use our Phillips screwdriver to get it on there all the way. Now we're gonna set the tonneau cover on top of our bed rails. And so that's gonna involve moving those totes out. So I recommend grabbing a friend again to help you do that. So we're just gonna lift up, pull these boxes out and let it rest. Our next step is going to be grabbing our canister cover. So we're going to come over to the tonneau cover itself. And we're going to come over to this place where we're going to make that connection, screwing on our bolts. And if we take a closer look at this, this actually has the ability to go up and down. I'm going to pull them both closest to me or down, just so it's consistent on both sides. And then I'm going to grab that canister cover and place it on top of there. You want to make sure that the holes are facing forward closest to our cab. And what we want to do at this point is line everything up. Once it's lined up, we're gonna grab one of our black bolts and just lightly screw it in. 
We don't want to screw it in all the way because we're going to want to make some adjustments after this. And when both sides are loosely on, we want to pull on it all the way forward, make sure both sides are even. And then we want to come over and look at the back and see how we have this gap here that I can get my finger between. We want to get rid of that and make it flush. And we want to make sure both sides are even. And when both sides are flush, then we can tighten this down the rest of the way. We're going to come over to our tailgate side now. And you're going to notice we have multiple notches. And what we want to go to is this notch furthest away or closest to our tailgate. I want to grab this included tool, use this thin point we have on it. And we want to make sure this is able to fit in between there and it's flush. We don't want it to be too far away. We have a gap and we don't want it to be too close either. We can't get it to fit under. So once you've adjusted that just by pulling on it either side, the next step is going to be installing this foam. And how we're going to do that is by pulling back this tunnel cover. Now I'm going to grab some masking tape and this is going to be used to mark where our tunnel cover was sitting. So now that we have this placed and I put this on the other side too, then we can pull this back some. And I want to have that gap. We can line up where this foam is going to sit. Cause this is going to be used so it prevents any water from getting in. We're going to lay out this foam on top of this sill. And when you're doing this, you're going to remove this paper so it sticks to it. And you don't have to worry about sliding around. But since we're just doing this for demonstrations today, we're just going to lay it on top. And then afterwards, when you have everything marked out, you're going to come by with your utility knife and just cut this where it meets the end of the rail. And I'm just going to lift up on this and place it on top of that foam. And I'm going to line it back up with that tape. Now I want to grab our clamp extenders and you want to make sure you put these in the right locations. So FL is going to go on the front left or your driver's side front. FR going to go on the front right, front passenger, back BL for the back left, and then BR for back right. When installing the clamp extensions, we want to make sure it's lined up with this rail underneath here. And we want this side clamp with that foam side facing towards the outside of your vehicle. Now, when you are putting this on here, the directions want you to kind of slide it on or rotate it on like this. I find it easier if you just go to the very back and line it up with this rail underneath and slide it on. And sometimes it can be a little bit difficult because it'll catch. And if it does catch or if it's really hard to slide on, you can come underneath here to where that hole is and just loosen that bolt up just a little bit so you can slide it better. When you have it on here, you want to push this for the back, back ones, the one closest to your tailgate, to this point where we meet this divot. And we want to be, get right at the beginning of it but not overlap it. Now when you're working on the front side, instead you're going to push this extender all the way down past it to where it sits on the front side of it. Now we're going to tighten this all the way and to do that we're going to come to the front of this extender. We're going to grab our 5 30 seconds allen key and find a hole at the very front of it. Match it up to a bolt that's inside of it and tighten it. You'll want to tighten this the rest of the way and repeat that process for the rest of the extenders. Now we're going to grab our clamp grips and you, how you put this together is just by lining these two up until it slides in place like this. 
And now I'm going to line up these two tabs and slide it on to that extension. And this can be a little bit tricky sometimes to get on. So the trick I like to do, if I'm having issues with it, I'll just remove the second half, slide this part on, and then come back around and slide that back half on. And with that in place, we're gonna grab our next items. And that's gonna be this knob with this bolt at the very end, along with this piece right here. And we're gonna line this to this rounded section here. Slide that bolt through until this makes connection and bolt them together. This is what's gonna apply that tension. I want to make sure this is all the way tight. And then you repeat that process for the other ones. And now we're going to install our kickstands. And you're going to have two of these, and they're both going to go on the tailgate side. Now we're going to have this bolt positioned where it goes through that hole right there. And the way we want this installed is we want to make sure that this sits squarely and applies pressure to our bed wall. So to get it on there better, we're going to put on these washers. And then we're going to come by with this wing nut and tighten this on first. And once this is nice and tight and that kickstand is positioned facing towards our bed wall, we're then going to tighten that down. You get to the point where it won't tighten anymore. And at that point, you are good. Now we're gonna grab our drainage tube and the adapter that goes with it. And the way they're gonna connect is this is gonna screw on top of that tube. We're gonna come back over to our rails. You are gonna do this on both sides too. And underneath here, there's a location that has a hole underneath it. That's where that water is gonna come out of. And you wanna Make sure that you have the open side, line it up with those tabs until it slides on and clicks into place. And then you're gonna run this tube through one of your factory openings. So this is a great location down here. If you don't have one, then you're gonna have to make one in a similar location to where this is. And just make sure you run it through and it sits flush with your vehicle. Now we're gonna install the drain tubes on the cab side. And this is going to be a little bit of a tight fit. But what you want to do is grab this and make sure when you have this, you want to make sure we have this foam washer. And if you notice, we have these tabs on either side of this. And if we go underneath here, you'll notice that there's an opening with a circle and two tabs on either side. So what you want to do is line that up so it meets and fits in that. Once it's fitted in, then you're gonna make sure you take this tube and bring it open over to one of the factory cutouts on your vehicle and push it through there. Now you might need to trim this if need be. Just be careful that you don't trim it too much. And then after we have this side installed, you can do, go to the passenger side. Now we're gonna come over to our weather strips and we're gonna have our sweep seal at the very top and underneath that one, we're going to have the wear strip. What we want to do is use a UV lubricant that comes with your kit. And you're going to lubricate underneath that sweep seal and then on top of that wear strip. Now, since we're just doing this for demonstrations, we won't be doing that today. But after when you've done that, then you're going to fully open up your tonneau cover and make sure nothing bends in on itself. And this is something we do want to watch out for. So if we come over here, 
we'll notice this right here is bending in on itself just a little bit. And what you want to do is come in, you can come in with a screwdriver and get underneath there, make sure this is flush. And the last part of the installation for the tonneau cover of this video is going to be just inserting this hook and loop system. And how that's going to work is you're going to have the one that's already attached to the top of the tonneau cover, which will then attach to this other one. And where you place this hook and loop system is your choice. We're just going to place it somewhere on the inside of our bed closest to the tailgate so it's easy to access. Now moving over to our next step is going to be installing our ladder rack. And so we're going to lay out everything. We're going to have our crossbars, the towers that go along with them, and then we're going to have all the hardware along with the end caps. You, I'm going to recommend some tools, just a few Allen keys, which I'll specify later on, and then some socket wrenches. Our first step is going to be removing this bolt. We're just going to twist it off. And once it's removed, we're going to start taking this end cap apart. And to do that, you'll notice we have three tabs on it. So what you have to do is apply pressure to each one of those tabs so the centerpiece pops out. And with it popped out, you'll notice it's extended some. And what I like to do at this point is apply pressure with this bolt so it pops right off. Then you can take the bolt out and put these two pieces aside. Now I'm going to grab that same bolt with this cylinder nut. Put that cylinder nut behind like it was before and bolt this nut on. And once this is hand tight, you're going to grab a 7 16 socket and tighten it down some more. Then at this point, you're stopped with that and then torque it down the rest of the way as to what the manual recommends. And after you repeated that same process on the other three clamps, we're going to grab our carriage bolts. There's going to be two per side. And we're going to roughly place them on our T-track. And what I also recommend is grabbing that adhesive strip and lining it up with those bolts with the paper side up. And when this is in place, you can repeat that same process on the other side. Now when we're installing the towers, we want to make sure our vertical side on the front crossbars are closest to our cab. And it's going to be the opposite direction for the ones on the rear side. Now we're going to grab our towers and line them up with those two carriage bolts with the holes on the bottom of it and place it on. And with it on, we're going to grab one of our washers, put it on the bolt. You do the same thing on the other side too. And then we're going to grab our nuts and thread them on. Just hand tight to start off with. Then we'll take our half inch socket and tighten the rest of the way. And what I recommend too, when you do have that socket wrench, I recommend grabbing a smaller one because this is going to be a tight fit in here. Now I want to take our crossbar and fit it through this hole we have on the side of the tower and slide it through until it reaches the other side. And when you have it on there all the way, what I recommend doing at this point is taking a tape measure, going from the tower to the end of the crossbar to get that overhang and make sure it's even on both sides. Now we're gonna run these bolts through the top and once all four of them are through, we're going to take this square plate and push it up through the bottom. I like to put my palm on top so these bolts don't push out. And next we're going to take a washer and push it up onto this bolt. A trick you can do is putting it on at an angle like so and it'll hold itself up and then just hand threading this nut on. And once this is on there all the way, or just at least hand thread tight, then we can put the rest of them on. Now we're gonna take a 3 16 Allen key, put it on the top where we have a connection made. 
Once that connection is made, we're going to go beneath and start tightening these bolts down with a half inch socket. After when both sides are tightened down on top, we're going to come over to the end of it to put on these end caps. We're just going to take this bolt, run it through, connect it to the hole on the back side, hand tighten that at first. Once I get that first one started, I'll grab the second bolt and repeat that process. And then I'm going to grab our Allen key, and that's going to be a 1 8 and tighten them down the rest of the way. And the last thing I recommend doing is just pulling that tonneau cover all the way out to make sure there's not any tight spots on it and it's fitting well. Another way you can tell this isn't fitting correctly is if you have any bowing on your crossbars. And if it is, then you need to loosen your bars up. But if you liked everything you saw today, let's just look at the installation and some of the features of the Lear's tonneau cover with the ladder rack on the back of our 2022 Ram 1500.